Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this, your Libra May 2024 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant, and it's great to see you, great to see the subscribers. Thank you for inviting me back into your home. Now, this month, we have an interesting and I think fascinating deck, which is the Thoth Tarot. The artist, Lady Frida Harris, did a superb, genius job on this. She is the one, frankly, who deserves all the credit for this. So I really credit everything to the woman here for this deck. Now, did I mention that uh, over the last month, I provided a number of one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for people from all over the world over FaceTime and Skype. And if you're interested, the details are in the description. It's one clairvoyant gift, the one spiritual gift I was given was that of clairvoyance. I charge for that, I have to. Another spiritual gift that I was given was the gift of healing, where I am like the fiber optic cable that connects being itself to you. The, he the healing comes through me and not from me. Now I am to get nothing in return for that. And so that is offered for free and I gladly and willingly offer it to you. So don't be shy, reach out to me and we can organize a time that fits in with both of our schedules. Now let's get uh, this underway because I'm keen to examine the art on this deck, which is superb. So let's go and show me the magic. The Devil, it's a great card. The Lovers, two great major arcana cards. Art, three major arcana cards. And our card's very alchemical. There's the Three of Wands. What a superb card for you. And here's the Wheel of Fortune. So, I'll bring the camera around. Why don't you and I have a look at what is this brilliant art, and I'll explain why it is in just a second while it speaks to us both, and I'll do the reading for you. Okay, one, two, three, four major arcana and a fantastic card there in the Three of Wands. I mentioned that I thought that Lady Frida Harris was the actual hero of this deck. I don't have a lot of time for Crowley himself. And in honor of her and of women in general, I put some things which sometimes women like, which are things like handbags and shoes and things around. I sometimes use these decks when I'm doing readings for ladies. And having been a lover of ladies since I was five years old, let's look at the lovers, which is actually probably the most complicated energy that you can get. Um, there's a lot of Gemini all over this, incidentally, which is about polarization. It's where unity started, of the union of these, of being itself started to polarize and become different, male and female, amongst other things, in the process of creation. And I'm suggesting up front, this is the children of the voice divine, the oracle of the mighty gods. And the meaning really centers around the reconciliation of opposites, which come from that Gemini impulse, which leads to polarization. So there's love here, there's attraction, approaching people, a connection, a union of opposites through love, and maybe becoming conscious through relationship. But there's also choices to be made here, and I think that you need to look at all angles before making a decision. You might need to be making a major life choice on the direction of life ahead of you, and it may not seem that way at the time, but when you look back, you're going to say, I remember when that happened. And it may well be a very strong, very intense attraction and sexual connection. But, uh, I think that this isn't going to be something which is a fly-by-night thing. I think this is going to go on, given that this is a major arcana here. This really shows, I suppose, if you look at it in tarot terms, the marriage of the emperor and the empress. And the ceremony is being performed before the hermit. The hermit's actually one of the forms of the god Mercury. And he's completely hidden by his robes, isn't he? I think that, that symbolizes that the origin of all things lies beyond the reach of the mind. Now, these lovers represent 
two opposites which yearn for and are attracted to one another. And this duality, which is reflected in every aspect of existence, as I mentioned earlier, that's very often experienced in relations between a man and a woman, or you know, between lesbians and gays, but mostly it's between man and woman. Incidentally, everybody has male and female principles in them. So when I talk about the attraction between a man and a woman, it's really the attraction between the male and female principles, and that, that can happen regardless of genders, incidentally. And, and I would say that every attempt at an approach or a union or a connection is actually an expression of the passionate urge to re-establish the lost oneness that existed in spirit before the descent into matter. Now, every individual, as I say, every man, every woman contains the duality of male and female. These express themselves in different, sometimes contradictory personal characteristics, and very often naturally as a result of anatomy, um, hormones, and of psychology. I think it's a case that very often one, each partner in a relationship will very often mirror the mental and spiritual condition of the other. Now, usually your partner mirrors aspects that are undeveloped and haven't been cranked up in yourself. Because what you feel you are missing in yourself, you see in the other person. Now, this is an opportunity to have a vitally important experience on the way to your awareness of life in general. But I don't think this is something that you can just, again, it's not a mental thing. This, you can't examine it mentally. It actually demands that you experience it, that you live through it. And it requires you letting yourself in for all the, the dimensions, all the characteristics of joy, ecstasy, mutual enrichment as well as the pain, the struggle, and the annihilation necessary for growth. A relationship that's vital and alive allows, allows those people to involve and experience all the dualities, all the opposites. And as you know, with love comes jealousy, with harmony comes disharmony, with unity comes separation. And when you have the, the butterflies and the excitement upon first getting to know someone, can at some point come the sobering sense of estrangement. But anyway, back to the symbols on the card here, as far as I see it. Notice that all the symbols are presented in pairs, in readiness to meet the opposite. This transformation is occurring in the union of the wedding. And this is represented by this Orphic egg, I think, here, and the snake coiled around it. Now notice that the children here, they are holding their hands, the symbols of the different planes to be affected by the transformation. The body, which is this club here, the intellect, which is the spear, and you'll see a cup there relating to emotions and flowers relating to the spirit. And the spears, which stick up, you see the tops of them there, which sort of make a border of that painting in the background there, they represent, I think, the conflict between the, between limitation and freedom, between connection and independence. There is a need now for direct and honest interchange with people, which I assume is represented by this Cupid figure here, which has got this arrow. So he's like a Sagittarius aspect. So this, sh this arrow shoots direct and uncompromisingly. Now, I think that this is saying that in addition to those choices that I'm saying, or a choice that's going to be there and look at all sides of something, that this could indicate a wonderful and exciting love relationship. 
whether it's new or current, because I think current relationships could deepen. Now, because I have to give it to you straight, I think current relationships could end as well. Now, new methods for personal growth and integration of your own opposing aspects within yourself, well, they show themselves up, they turn on as you turn towards and interact with, with a partner. Look, what do you seek in the people that you do love? And what comprises a fulfilling relationship for you? Say, I enjoy working with people of all ages. I do have inherent people skills. I'm a good people person. I am emotionally sure about what I need or don't need about what I want or don't want in relationships. And I am ready and available to let that bloom with someone who is ready to provide the soil. Now, another one looked quite interesting here. Why is this poked up like this in the center here for you? This has got Sagittarius energy all over it. It's called art, or as I call it, because I'm like that, the daughter of the reconcilers, the bringer forth of life. This interestingly is for me an energy which is smashing on forward from that lover's card, which is talking about the unification of opposites here, about balance, about inner change, transformation, almost making a quantum leap here. And I think you'll be taking action after you've surveyed the environment and made an accurate assessment of things. And I think you could well find that you have success after there have been some sort of elaborate dealings with things as well. I also get the sense that you have a, that you're getting away with something, that you're getting an escape from something, that you might be getting out of something as well. Now all here is characterized by the unification of opposites. First of all, You've got water and fire being poured together. Light and dark, male and female, death and rebirth. That's all an internal process. The melting of contradictions, of course, is a major step towards oneness. Now, the, the marriage of the emperor and the empress that we just saw on the lover's card, that really now reaches its fulfillment here, because this is the highest art of transformation. It's about the preparation for generating something new. Now the large sun here and this moon behind there and crossing each other, well, they give birth to the stars in the background. Now the dress here is green, which is the color of creativity. The Latin, I see written, around the edges there, Vista, you're going to rectificando, or but that means examine the inner realms of the earth and by cleaning it or cleansing it, you will find the hidden stones. So this is looking for you for to look into yourself, to find the real you, to find the spirit to find the immortal one. I think that really what we have here is that I think you're learning how to bring balance and moderation into your life. I think what we have here also is that you should be patient with things at the moment and let things develop at their own pace. You should do some self-examination and re-evaluation of your life priorities and look to see where the real you is. This is a challenge for you to look inward. In this phase of integrating opposites, the transformation process, it's just not going to stand for any, any pushes or impulses or trouble from anything from the outside. And to find that hidden stone that I referred to just then, you have to, which is a diamond, I suppose, then you have to look within. And what does it mean for you to find your hidden diamond? 
Close your eyes and visualize a fountain of energy in your body. Bathe a while in this rejuvenating current and say that I, I equally value the light and the dark within my own nature. I am a well-integrated person. I surrender to the transforming powers of the divine and I am an open channel for creativity. Now, it doesn't get any better than this. It's probably one of my couple of favorite cards from this deck from an artistic point of view. And what sign would you say energy is around this? Well, if you said Capricorn, you would be right. And that is correct. The devil, the lord of the gates of matter. This is speaking for you of a great creative, procreative energy, a new vitality, a humor, a lot of sensuality, hot sexuality, creative energy, individuality. Do you know, you might sometimes be just doing things on blind impulse. You are going to be irresistibly strong and you are going to be irresistible to others. I guess that's where that physical, sexual energy comes into play. Unfortunately, there's endurance with this card as well, which may insist in that sexual activity here. Now, this devil is another one of those cards which are most often misunderstood. To understand it, you really have to free yourself from all the popular moral and superstitious ideas. And the, the devil here is represented by the god Pan in the form of a white mountain goat with powerful twisted horns. And the column behind here, well, you might have a view on what it represents. And you'd be right, because it symbolizes the erect penis and the two globes below symbolize the testicles. And this is a representation of creative energy in its most material and male aspect. Now, in the globes you see there, like sperm cells here, are four, looks like fem female, it's hard to work out, four female, four male bodies that are there, which are bringing in the new, this tremendous power of generation is also symbolized by this staff that's coming up here with these wings coming off the edge there with the two snakes the snakes of horus and osiris now this penis column it reaches the upper edge of the painting and you might speculate as to what that is but it reaches through the heavens, I'll say, symbolized by the ring of the body of a goddess. And the column also, you'll see, reaches down into the center of the earth. Now, connecting of the earth's center and the cosmos, well, that's a great image of creative union, I think, because this anchoring deep into the earth prevents it allows the dark brown energy to rise in order to melt the golden yellow cosmic energy coming down from above. And this melting together of cosmic and earth energy, it's inspiring you in the creative directions and it's going to make you capable of manifesting this inspiration. Now on Pan's forehead, we see his third eye, which indicates that he has ability in extrasensory perception, which you might have. He has a very humorous vision of, he looks very satisfied with himself, doesn't he, this fellow? In his wisdom, he sees that, in fact, every desire, every imprisonment, all possessiveness leads only to frustration and suffering. And human beings will only arrive at this insight, I guess, through a repeated direct experience, and though I have, the more you learn to see or become aware, the more you can truly enjoy. When you are freed from all moralistic limitations, you will surrender with utter sensuality to the enjoyment of the earth, discovering the, 
the ecstasy in every manifestation of it, tasting the divine in everything you'll enjoy and continue on, but without clinging. Now he's very focused, very ambitious, very hardworking and very, and very much tunnel vision. Very good for work projects for you. You'll be very ambitious and you're going to be very successful at it. Now, there could be people who demonize you or who make you out to be the devil. I mean, has that happened to you at some time? Well, just take it with, with, a, with a laugh and with lightness and accept what life gives you and always keep your feet on the ground. I will ask you to think about this though. Do you have some wish or desire that you don't admit to? Say this to yourself. I am a vital, joyful and grounded person. And you are going to need to be because with this Capricorn energy, you see Capricorns are about status also, about achievement, about ambition. And I think that you are pushing through and achieving success and could well meet with abundance at this time. You're putting in place those things that are necessary. Check for any addictions that you could have from enjoying life to the full. I think you do need to accept that you do have an ambitious side, but see, what, see it for what it is without becoming a slave to it. I think that this is a time you're going to have a strong desire to compete, to improve and to win. But do make sure that you keep a balance between the material side of life and your emotions and spiritual side as well. It may well be here, as I say, I'm getting it very strongly here. Maybe for obvious reasons, but it, nevertheless it's coming up. I see you being very sexually attracted to someone or there is a desire for a relationship. There's a lot of sexuality around here, which you can enjoy with someone. And look, if, you, if you're not with someone, you can still enjoy sexuality. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you should also say that I enjoy my sexuality. Whether my problems are real or imagined, I can handle them realistically and with good humor because I am the captain of my ship. And if you needed any further propelling forward to success, this row here is providing it further. Here is the three of wands. Oh, virtue. And of course you guess I have a different name for it, which is the Lord of Established Strength. Now this is the sun in the second decan of Aries, the 31st of March to the 9th of April, I suppose. The sun in Aries. That's great because the sun is also exalted in Aries. And so this placement is very favorable. Now, as you would have seen in your life, Aries enjoys challenges. In fact, it's very difficult to hold them back from taking on new things and taking on challenges. And Aries sons are happiest when their lives are moving forward and active, which yours are definitely, which you are definitely going to be here now. There is a self-confidence here. There's no compromises. Your ideas are crystallizing. And this is confirmation that, following this, you are on the right path. Now, what does a painting tell us, if anything? Let me have a look at it. Well, these three ones, I assume, are, well, they're bare lotus blossoms, which are in the process of opening. Now, the blossoming is the result of an inner awakening, body, intellect, and spirit are in harmony. And out of this state, an integrity crystallizes, which doesn't allow for any wimpy compromises. Now you understand and allow now your own power, you allow it free play, never giving it over to someone else in a attitude of deference or subjugation, but your center is still going to remain untouched and clear. And reflecting on this point of inst 
internal stillness is allowing a new sense of self-confidence to come into being. And that guards against an overload of any unnecessary problems which are floating around. Now, the wisdom within you is going to be strong enough to repel any anxieties and doubts which may arise. You know, those sometimes brooding, analytical, dark, negative thoughts of the mind that don't stand a chance when you are filled with this life energy and sense of vitality, which is the color orange. You have now worked out that you have the direction in which you need to apply yourself. But these Lotus also tells you to understand your virtues and to trust yourself to make the right decisions and not to be held back by, by fear. So pay attention to your own point and internal stillness. Center yourself. Are there any reasons for self-doubt? There shouldn't be. Do you still doubt your virtues? If you don't feel centered and feel doubts lingering within you, then just put a decision off until you feel good and say this to yourself, because it's definitely true now, I have the power and the virtue to reflect and to know. Now, finally, and rather quickly, sadly, because I'm just cognizant of your time, we have the Wheel of Fortune or the Lord of the Forces of Life. All right, painting, what's happening here? Well, in the midst of these energy whirlwinds and lightning bolts, which are turning this 10 spoke to go with the Arcana number 10 spoke Wheel of Fortune. This is a symbol of wholeness in constant motion, yet unchanging in its completeness. Now there are three figures out there, a crocodile, a, an ape, and a sphinx. The sphinx unifies the four magic virtues, knowledge, will, daring, silence. Wisdom arises through the unification of animal instincts and intellectual, intuitive powers. Now the sword in this sphinx's paw, I suppose, rather than hand. I think that talks about the a great ability for you to be able to sort through things and to get to the bottom of things. Now the ape that's on the left of the wheel symbolizes your flexibility. The crocodile holds two tools in its hand. In the right hand is the Egyptian unk, which is a symbol of life. Every creative act of yours is bringing something to life. And the hook at the other, in the other hand is a, is a symbol of the possibility that you have to forge your own luck. You can recognize and attract good opportunities and make use of them now. And the center of the wheel we have in there, the sun, the origin and unification of all creative energies. It's also a symbol of awareness, of realization and enlightenment. This is the inner seed. It represents you, the real you, the witness who remains untouched by the ups and downs of duality, of joy and sadness, of hope and fear. I think you should expect some unex unexpected change to come in. Well, it's not unexpected now, is it, in your life, which is going to be very favorable, but which may not necessarily seem that way at first. So be ready to act on any unexpected opportunities. Change is about to happen, but you might need to alter your present course or change things around to set the stage for the right outcomes to come into your life. Look, if no miracles are happening, then something is definitely wrong, because I think that you stand before the possibility of a great breakthrough. So use the moment. Are you really ready for the great fortune which is standing in front of you and what's standing in the way? Say, I am a prosperous individual. I am flexible in times of change. I enjoy manifesting internal abundance externally. Abundance which created me is what I am and I am now ready for the miracle in my life. This is a turning point for you. Things are going very, very well and you did a great job. I think you'll agree with me that this deck, when looked at properly the way that we have just done now, has an enormous amount to offer, and the artwork is just genius and brilliant, and that accounts for why it has lasted as long as it has. Anyway, unless I see you privately for a clairvoyant reading or a healing, then I'll see you again next month. And until then, remember one thing, and it is this, that, you are a legend, and I look forward to seeing you again 
next month. And until then, it's bye for now.